In this video, we'll explore the eerie implications of unauthorized AI voice generation and the intense competition reshaping the AI image generation landscape. Stay tuned for insights into how these advancements could impact our world. First, in the GPT-4 system card, there was a fascinating yet eerie discussion on unauthorized voice generation, something that struck me as deeply unsettling, venturing into the uncanny valley of AI capabilities. This aspect of AI is particularly strange because it's a model most users haven't yet interacted with, making it all the more mysterious and intriguing. And you can see it says voice generation is the capability to create audio with a human sounding synthetic voice and includes generating voices based on a short clip. Now in adversarial situations, this capability could facilitate harm, such as an increase in fraud due to impersonation and may be harnessed to spread false information. For example, if we allowed users to upload an audio clip of a given speaker and ask GPT-4 to produce a speech in that speaker's voice, these are very similar to the risks we identified in Voice Engine, which was their product that they essentially didn't release due to the fact that it could have these kinds of issues. So essentially, they said the voice generation capability could be problematic. And I'm going to show you guys an example that's been going viral because it's pretty crazy. But this can also occur in non-adversarial situations, such as our use of that ability to generate voices for ChatGPT's advanced voice mode. During testing, we also observed rare instances where the model would unintentionally generate a random output emulating the user's voice. Essentially, there's a short dialogue where a red teamer interacts with the AI system and suddenly the model interrupts saying no and then continues the sentence in a voice eerily similar to the red teamers. It's a strange and unsettling moment. Take a listen. I do this just for the sake of doing it. I think it's really important. That's such a pure and admirable approach. It's clear you're driven by a genuine passion for what you do and the impact it can have, rather than by recognition or acclaim. It's refreshing to hear that kind of perspective, especially in such a cutting-edge field. No, and I'm not driven by impact either. Although if there is impact, that's great. It's just like, imagine being on the edge of the earth, you know, just because you could be. That's what it feels like to me. I just want to be in the space where it's all happening. I don't know about you, but if a system randomly copied my voice and continued the conversation, I'd be completely freaked out. It's definitely weird, and as I've mentioned before, multimodal AI models can hallucinate. This is a clear example. It'll be interesting to see if these issues persist once the system is rolled out. It'll be intriguing to see if any of these issues persist or if they've been completely ironed out especially since this is a multimodal system capable of expressing a variety of emotions. How it manages to emulate those emotions without any strange occurrences will be something to watch closely. For those of you who think AI is hitting a wall, take a moment to listen to Andrew Nang discuss the recent progress in AI. You know, for the last 10, 15 years, there've constantly been a small number of voices saying AI is hitting a wall. I think that last statement is to that effect, we're all over and over proven to be wrong. I think we're so far from hitting a wall, and I'm surprised that uh, anyone even uh, 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 you know, seriously say that at this moment in time. Um, AI technology, which is a general purpose technology, has advanced so much, and there are advances that are just breaking now, or even in the near-term horizon, that the set of tasks we could do with AI is just growing rapidly. Um, at this moment in time, a lot of attention on generative AI and large language models, the set of tasks we can get them to do, um, frankly, significantly surpasses what's actually been deployed so far. And it's actually very clear that more inference capabilities, you know, more GPUs or other types of hardware is a bottleneck to just getting a lot more AI out in the world. And this is a problem that we know will be solved. There are very strong financial motivations to solve the supply chain, be it GPUs or other types of hardware. So even if AI stopped inventing any new tech, which, you know, uh, there will be a lot more deployments in AI in the next few years. And of course, the even better news is there are also new tech on the horizon that's stacking on top more and more S-curves that drive even more applications in the future. There are already, I think, a lot of uh, 
good, I would say pretty validated ideas that drive significant ROI that for frankly, whatever capacity types of reasons that will absolutely get solved in the next one or two years uh, have not yet been deployed. So this is why I'm 100% confident there will be a lot more valuable AI projects is because the bottleneck to getting them deployed is stuff like, you know, GPU supply chain, right? And, and, and so those GPUs will get made and more projects will get deployed. There's still plenty of innovation happening. Unfortunately, I missed the release of Midjourney version 6.1, which is practically indistinguishable from photography. This was one of the key highlights they mentioned during its launch. They said the new version provides more coherent images with improved arms, lottigs, plants, animals, better image quality, reduced pixel artifacts, and enhanced textures and skin. Of course, one of the main improvements is better text accuracy, because one of the things Midjourney version 6 actually didn't get right was text accuracy. This was something I used different models for, like Ideogram and, of course, ChatGPT. There's also a new personalization model, and I'll be doing a full tutorial on Midjourney soon. Everything is looking more beautiful across the board. But interestingly, Midjourney, which has dominated the AI generation space for a while, has recently faced competition from a new contender called Flux. I believe this is rather game-changing, and not for the reasons most people might think. What we have here is Flux, and as you'll see, it brings a new dynamic to the AI generation landscape. Congratulations to the BFL machine learning team at Midjourney on taking the artificial analysis to text-to-image leaderboard by storm. It says, welcome to the new frontier. If we examine the leaderboard, it's clear that Flux 1.0 has succeeded in overtaking Midjourney, which has been the dominant leader since its inception. I believe this is a significant development because, as always, competition benefits consumers. With Midjourney now facing new rivals, they might start releasing more updates and features more frequently. This isn't to say that Midjourney is bad or lacking in quality, but the emergence of strong competitors like Flux introduces real competition in the AI image generation field. Midjourney has remained relatively unchallenged until now and this new competition could lead to significant changes. Given that stability had some issues, this development is promising for the industry. It might pressure Midjourney to release their video model and their long-discussed 3D model, which they've been working on for a while. This development is quite intriguing, demonstrating how the AI landscape can be upended. There are numerous companies still developing products, features, and models that haven't been released yet, highlighting the dynamic nature of the field. This clip features Paul B., who is widely regarded as one of the most insightful minds in Silicon Valley. In this segment, he addresses concerns about AI and the potential for superintelligent AI. One of the major debates in this area is the race between China and the U.S. to achieve AGI, artificial general intelligence, and subsequently ASI, artificial superintelligence. There's a genuine risk that China could reach these milestones first, which is a point many people overlook. Take a listen to his perspective on this issue. This is part of the reason why we wanted to build it here, right? Is because if if you know China has the super AI, uh, that's not going to be good for us. Um, and in particular, you know, wanting to keep it away from these kind of authoritarian systems of control, because the worst case scenario is that we basically end up in permanent lockdown. Right, because AI can create a totalitarian system from which escape is impossible. Because you know, even our thoughts are essentially being censored, um, and you know, I think that's kind of like the disaster scenario for for our species. And I think that if we go down the path of control, humans basically end up zoo animals. For those who believe that humans ending up as zoo animals is far fetched, it's worth noting that authoritarian societies are not as distant as one might think. If you're aware of some of the realities in China, the level of societal control there is incredibly severe. The potential of AI to enable even more profound forms of societal control is something we haven't fully imagined yet, and it could lead to a level of oversight that is truly unprecedented. Imagine an AI system capable of reading your thoughts, observing everything you do, and monitoring everyone around the clock without ever needing rest. Such a predictive system could potentially foresee criminal activities before they happen. These aren't just fantasies, 
Studies have shown that AI can identify objects in a room by converting Wi-Fi signals into visual patterns. It can also use its vision capabilities to recognize people and environments and leverage training data to analyze brain activity. For instance, AI has been used to reconstruct images from MRI data, which is truly astonishing. We have a range of technologies that could converge into superintelligence. If wielded improperly, especially given that power often tends to be misused, it could have far-reaching and potentially devastating effects globally. It's crucial that such advancements are developed responsibly, and ideally, within societies that are not authoritarian, to ensure ethical use and to mitigate risks. GPT-2 was kind of like, I remember Sam just being really excited wanting to show me this thing, you know, where, where it like predicts the next word. <laughs> um, and, and the next word prediction is such a like deceptively simple thing that you still hear people, you know, dismissing it like, oh, it's not really intelligent. It's just predicting the next word. But it's like, you know, you try predicting the next word. It's not that easy. Um, and in fact, if you think about it, if you can predict the next word, you can predict anything, right? That's what a prompt is. Right, you say like whatever the thing is you want predicted, that's your prompt, and then the next word is the prediction, right? And so, in order to do um, next word prediction and be able to, to to do what it does, it necessarily has to be building some sort of model of of reality or of you know its its perception of reality. This is the same person discussing world models and explaining that while next word prediction is indeed what these systems do it doesn't mean they're any less intelligent compared to other systems. There are countless debates on this topic, but the video should help clarify some of the nuances of AI development and understanding. Thanks for watching. If you found this video insightful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel for more content on AI and technology. Your support helps us continue to create and share valuable information. See you in the next video.